because it just shows you that we're all in the same boat. They were in the same boat. And even though they made they be, they became legendary traders, they still started the same way. Schwartz spent a decade losing money. I mean, wow. I'm, every time I read this, I'm like, how can you stick around for 10 years failing and still keep going? Very, very impressive. Next one. Never losing more than 3% of his equity month end to month end. To month end. So in his... Um, once he became a full-time trader and he started, once he became a technical analyst, haha, and he started actually making money, he was never more than 3% down of his capital, of his whole capital from month, you know, first of the month to end of the month, basically. Physical training and perseverance in the U.S. Marine Corps, yeah. Training your body, training your mind. This kind of goes uh, along with, you know, get enough sleep, eat healthy, do regular exercise because that keeps your body in shape which will keep your mind in shape it's it's uh, they're connected you can't uh, pretend to be a healthy trader if you're not trading your body as well because then you're missing half of the half of the things yeah you're gonna, you're going to be uh, a bit more nervous you get sick of sitting around maybe your back starts hurting or you oh, you can't sit anymore then you need a different table and all that crap just keep moving keep your body in motion as well Marty Schwartz considers himself a synthesizer. Yes, he took different methodologies and put them together into one. So he didn't really invent anything new. He just made his trading system based on other things that he learned. Know your uncle point and protect your capital. Uncle point is the, ow, 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 ow. I, okay, I give up. You need to know that. Your stop loss is your ow, ow, ow point before you enter the trade. Before you enter the trade, you know, if price reaches here, I'm out. I don't care. I don't care what who says or posts on Discord or on Twitter. I'm out, period. Protect your capital. Yes. My winners are always in front of me. Ah, this is a good one. My winners are always in front of me. You take a loss, it's fine. There's winners waiting for you ahead. Keep looking forward. Keep looking forward. Or you'll miss your next winner. One of the most suicidal things you can do in trading is to keep adding to a losing position. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've done that. Yep, my hand's up. I try to play defense, defense, defense. I believe in protecting what you have. Yes. Your capital, your family, etc., etc., your health. Play defensively. That's the best offense. That's what Marty says. I've always had my biggest setbacks after my biggest victories. Yes. That's happened to me too. So take a break. Take a break after a losing streak. Take a break after a winning streak. Or at least reduce in both situations your, your position size. To make sure you're still in your rhythm. Or to get back into your rhythm. Or even after the break, start small and then get bigger. Uh, Daniel has mentioned this several times. When he comes back from vacation, he'll start with smaller position size. Because he needs to reconnect with the market. Yes, I can confirm um also on monday if you take a break during the weekend and you're completely away from the charts you have had a break so you can start small and then get back into it as a trader you are forced to confront your mistakes because the numbers don't lie yeah so basically marty's saying while well, other careers or other people are like oh mistakes oh bad things i didn't make a mistake as a trader <laughs> you will make mistakes you have to and you need them to run your statistics and to know what's what works and what doesn't so no ego Take a loss. Before taking a position, always know the amount, the amount that you're going to lose. So your uncle point will mean I'm losing how much? First question before you enter the trade. Not how much am I going to make? How much am I going to lose? I always take my losses quickly. That is probably the key to my success. Yes. That has changed for me also radically. I have a very, my old broker had a very nice time statistic that showed me how, my, how long did I have a trade open for. And then it classified it as losers and winners. And at the beginning, when I started with that broker, my losers, I was holding for twice as long as my winners. So I was closing my winners sooner than my losers. And by the time I left the broker, the statistic was completely the other way around. My winners, I would hold for maybe six to eight hours. Um, this was on gold and SPX der uh, derivatives, CFDs. And my losers, on average, 40 minutes. And it was the other way around before. Well, actually, it wasn't 
that exaggerated the other way around. But at the end, my winners, six to eight hours, my losers, 45 minutes. So I was just getting rid of the losers so fast. Is I don't like it. Tuck, I'm out. <laughs> and it worked. I tripled the account. It's great. I always take my losses quickly. That's probably the key to my success. Yes, I think it's the key probably to everyone's. To hell with my ego, making money is more important. Learn to take losses. Yes. Don't be proud. It's going to get back to break even. I'm going to make it. It's going to be fine. No, it's not. Take the loss. Don't increase your position size until you have doubled or tripled your capital. That's Marty's advice. I've always had my biggest step, I've had my biggest victories. Oh, wait, that's a repeat one. That's over. Okay. That's it. That's it, guys. I can't talk anymore. My voice is killing me. <laughs> so let's see what you guys have said. I'm going to pop out the chat in here again. That's why I made it like this, because I wanted to interact. Otherwise, it's a bit boring to just talk to the screen. Boom, boom, boom. Love the stream. Change a diaper during it. Had two coffees. <laughs> now that is a relaxing stream, I would say, huh? <laughs> that is being productive right there. Thanks for the highlights, Victor. Great stream for a Sunday morning. You're very welcome. I'm glad you liked it. It was just a spontaneous at the end. I thought, come on, let's just jump on stream and see uh, if uh, anyone's on there. Nelson, if you have a 1% risk management of 5,000, we allow $1,000 fifty dollars and else you make. If you change that, do you have to still do a risk management calculation for? Um, yeah. Do you need to make a new or you stick to the... Uh, I guess that you mean if you have to recalculate if your account size has changed? Yeah, theoretically, yes. Yeah. Theoretically, if your account goes up or down from the 5,000, you need to adjust the trade accordingly. This was the, um, I posted in a psychology channel, I think a week ago or a bit more, um, that experiment that they ran where uh, people were told this coin will 60% of the time fall, when you flip it, is going to fall on heads and 40% of the time on tails. And then they told people, you know, you can make this much money at the end of the competition. And they just uh, recorded what kind of strategies they would pick. And uh, they actually caught almost everyone betting on, on the 40% side too, at some point during the experiment, <laughs> which is crazy because, you know, why would you bet on the 40% if you have a 60% guaranteed chance? But basically the point was um, that you can, uh, that you should adjust your risk size depending on uh, on winning or losing in that experiment. So if you have 5,000 and you take 10 losses in a row, you're going to have less money. So the 1% of the future trades that you take uh, from that is going to be uh, less. And if your account goes up, your 1% goes up more. And that's the point. If you keep growing your account, this 1% will accompany you. So 1% of 5,000 is... Um, Fifty dollars. If you do it, uh, have a one percent of ten thousand. Obviously, it's a hundred dollars. So all of a sudden, you can risk. Uh, you know, the risk is uh, is going up. Um, the risk is staying the same, but your the amount of your position, your position size, will go up. That's the that's the point of growing the account. You're you're not changing the system. Just imagine, even if you're trading with a thousand dollars, that you're trading with ten million, so that you feel maybe the pressure of. How much would you like to protect that capital? And that's, I think, a good strategy in your head to just make yourself um, be very, very careful with your capital. Because imagine, oh my God, I'm moving 10 million around. <gasps> I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. Of course you don't. So keep your wrist tight. So yeah, theoretically, you have to adjust your size. Um, but if, you know, if you're slowly growing your account, you can probably stay around the same position size depending on the, on the stop loss. Yeah, But the stop loss, you say 4% here. That's the example from the from the contender stream or from the beginner's videos. If you have a 12% stop loss, then you have to adjust your trading size again. So the answer is, Nelson, yes, you need to make that calculation before every trade. Once you have, you know, 12 years experience like Daniel, maybe you can stick to the same position size all the time. But otherwise, for the beginning, always calculate. And there's no excuse for this. Bybit has a calculator on the app. Yeah. And BitMix also has a calculator. You can enter everything in there. Let's see, I'm going to open the Bybit app. I can't show you on screen, but where is it? Main screen, the home screen, chart. Yeah, if you hit the big yellow button in the middle, then you'll see your open positions, right? And in the top right, next to cross margin or isolated, whatever you have on there, there's a little calculator sign. There you can enter everything. 
So it's easy peasy. There's a calculator in the app for Bybit. There's a calculator on BitMEX as well. I don't know if Binance has one. I think they don't, but they just want to take your money, of course. <laughs> I didn't say that. And um, yeah, always calculate before you trade. Yes. Okay, guys. Um, I hope you liked the stream. I'm going to wrap it up for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. I'm going to continue to sit in my 1x short, and I will continue to ignore Bitcoin for the rest of the day. And when we get uh, to the champion stream tonight, then I'll look at it again <laughs> because Daniel's going to look at it. So I can't really avoid it. No, but it's nice because we get a head start for the week. You know, the futures open at midnight, the Chicago futures and SPX and everything. Um, and usually, I mean, you should do whatever you want. You're welcome, Nelson. But usually I try to wait for London open um, and then I wait for US open on Mondays. So I'm not very, very keen on taking trades on Monday morning because I know that the big players are missing. So for me, I, I like to have a full cycle of all markets open like Tuesday. Yeah. And Tuesday, if there's no holidays, everybody has opened. Asia has opened, London has opened and New York has opened and closed again. So everyone has gone through once. The futures are on their continuous mode since Sunday. You know, they go the whole week. Um, so th Tuesdays are a bit more interesting, perhaps. Uh, doesn't mean that there's no trades on Monday, of course. But uh, I'm a bit more cautious. Yeah, I want to just get back into things. If I'll take a trade, it's going to be smaller than usual, maybe. You know, just kind of getting back into the rhythm. And if it's a good rhythm, then I can increase size. Yeah. So anyway, have a good Sunday, guys. And uh, I'll catch you tonight on the Champion Street.